everyone and welcome to the Weekly Report. I'm Lara Ish with the Office of Environmental Quality and here are the top three things you should know this week. The city manager signed a new policy that all fleet vehicles should be electric vehicles going forward when feasible. The city fleet produces nearly 15% of the city's greenhouse gas emissions and transitioning to electric vehicles will help the city meet its climate protection goals. City employees play a big role in helping us protect the environment. Each year, the Environmental Management Commission recognizes employee-initiated projects for their out-of-the-box thinking to make the city more sustainable. This year's honorees include the KC Parks Ambassador Program, fuel-efficient equipment at KC Water, and drone use in illicit discharge investigations at KC Water. The KC Streetcar provides sustainable transportation to millions of riders. The route extension to 51st and Brookside Boulevard will provide even more opportunity for KC residents to get around. The mayor got an up-close look at the Upgrades on Main project that is replacing the underground utilities before the new streetcar track is installed. The utility upgrade should be completed by the end of 2022. Thanks for watching the Weekly Report. I'm Lara Ish with the Office of Environmental Quality. Stay tuned for videos about these items as well as a video from Parks and Recreation. Hi, um, these are the Environmental Management Commission Awards for Environmental Excellence. So these annual awards, and this is the 19th year they've been given, are given to any city employee from any department who works above and beyond their usual job to do something extra that benefits the environment and makes Kansas City a more resilient place to live. Steve Schaefer, I work for Kansas City, Missouri Water Services Department in wastewater preventing maintenance. Uh, what we have created here is we use a, a environmentally friendly uh, fuel. Uh, one of them is a synthetic based product manufactured by steel manufacturing. The other one is a ethanol free product. Uh, we've created tremendous response as far as equipment goes and performance of the equipment. We've cut fuel consumption down. We've cut uh, repair costs down tremendously over the last several years because of switching fuels. Uh, we are environmentally conscious. Uh, we have two crews that use it. Both of them deal with the environment on a daily basis. So I felt that it was my responsibility to create something that is environmentally friendly. Uh, if it accidentally gets spilled on the ground, it's, it's not going to harm the environment. Um, we've increased performance of this equipment by, I'd say, 60%. Um, all of our equipment is serviced on a yearly basis. Uh, and when this was serviced about five months ago, uh, there is a tremendous amount of uh, savings as far as parts wise uh, because we're not having to replace what we call fuel pickups. So other than that, that's all I have. Thank you and thank you for the award. Yeah, it, picking up trash and litter and working with the parks is a passion of mine. Um, I know sometimes it can seem a little overwhelming with everything else we have going on in life to think about, oh, all the social uh, change that needs to happen and, and cultural change that needs to happen. But you can make a big difference just in your neighborhood, taking a walk with your dog. You know, it doesn't have to be some big gesture. It can just be um, taking a grocery bag around and picking up the, the pieces on your block. So every bit helps and I, I really think it is that impression that you make on others, the, the people that are peeking out their windows or driving by, you know, you're not necessarily going to get a thank you or, or praise or recognition, but that's not what it's about. It's about really encouraging others to, to 
pick up some trash, make the little bit of change that we can make and, and, uh, and pitch in together to, to help out. I am just really excited about the native plants push that I've seen from KCMO Parks and I'm really hoping that the rest of the community and the rest of the city can embrace the native plants because when you bring the native plants in you're just increasing like the educational opportunities that the parks can bring. So you can learn entomology, forestry, horticulture, there's like so much to learn, ornithology, like there's a monarch butterfly flying right behind the camera here and it's enjoying all of these lovely native plants. If this was just turf grass you'd have none of that so it's like just want people to embrace the native plants and kind of what we have naturally. It's like we need to appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Kellner and Mr. Stepp, they both have a combined 55 years of service at the water treatment plant, doing amazing work keeping the larger metro, not just the city of Kansas City, but we provide water for the larger metro area, uh, clean, drinkable, high quality, sustainable, and it's an amazing process because they have to deal with all kinds of changes in the water. We get our water from the Missouri River. Join Girl Scouts across Kansas City as they learn the importance of recycling right. More than 70% of what we throw away each week can be recycled. Although recycling is increasing, so are contamination rates. Follow this top 10 checklist each week to ensure what you put in your bin can be recycled curbside. All plastic bottles and containers marked from 1 through 7 dump out their liquid and keep on their caps. All aluminum and tin cans, just make sure they're empty and not crushed. All cardboard boxes are flattened and free of excess tape and labels. All aerosol cans must be completely empty and no longer kiss. Paperboard and pizza boxes. These are usually recyclable, but if they have any grease or food on them, they should be thrown away. No plastic bags. If you bag your recycling, it will end up in a landfill. No plastic milk. No credit cake, not even a paper bag. No glass. Please take all glass to the appropriate recycling bins in Kansas City. No use paper plates, tissues, face masks, styrofoam, food, liquids, electronics, or yard waste. Recycle right, Kansas City! We have so many departments between the KC ATA, KC Water, KC Streetcar, CMAR, 15 different private utility companies. They're all working together in unison to minimize impacts and make this project as successful as possible. And then ultimately, what's going to be a world-class uh, public transportation amenity uh, running up and down Main Street. $350 million project, the largest by far transit project the region's ever built. With the university, 
is really foundational to what we've been trying to do on the public transportation front. that this project remains on time and on budget scheduled for an opening in 2025. I know a lot of people have said, wow, it's not as easy to drive down Main Street as it was a few years ago. Well, we're looking forward to it being both easier, but also having fixed rail public transportation that can take you through, new connections in different parts of our city, and I think this is a sign of incredible progress in Kansas City. what we do is underground, out of sight, out of mind. So until you start digging up stuff like on this project, you don't know what's under there. I think today was a great opportunity to show the mayor and Councilwoman Boo and uh, Cedar City leadership about the great coordination that's went on to um, make this project happen uh, for us to get in and out of uh, the corridor before the streetcar starts is very important uh, to make sure that all the utilities get relocated in a timely fashion. Today we have the chance to announce a bold and I think transformative change. Procurement and preferences for electric vehicles for the city of Kansas City and for all departments and divisions that work with us. As of today, all new municipal fleet vehicles must be 100% zero emissions battery electric vehicles. This is a bold and aggressive uh, approach that we're taking to address key issues in our communities. Climate change, of course, being one of them. Air pollution, a big one as well. We've got a lot of very dirty vehicles on the streets, diesel and lots of other pollutants that are entering our communities from our own vehicles. Kansas City is a city that is growing, that's dynamic, that's taking care of issues that were long problems for us, but more than anything, we're a city with our eye on the future. So this is an exciting step for us. It's bold and aggressive, but we need to be doing bold and aggressive things in order to tackle the issues that face us here.